Welcome to this edition of ARTV News. I'm Michael Apostoli. And I'm Ora Liva. The Worldwide Exhibition Third Santati, Then, Now, Next Story of India Woman in Dread is being welcomed this month at the Melbourne Museum. Third Santati showcases 75 handmade textiles made by contemporary Indian designers to celebrate the country's 75th anniversary of independence. The show brings together many national textile traditions and theatre works by some of its most well-known artists, designers and artisans. Matters and materials of the specially commissioned fabric for the exhibition are seen through the lens of innovation. Visit the Melbourne Museum to see 75 masterpieces influenced by Indian culture. For more information, Please visit the website museumvictoria.com.au Melbourne Fashion Week is a celebration of Melbourne's best designers and creatives who help to position Melbourne as Australia's fashion capital. This year's program supports the best in Australian fashion, including runways in unexpected and impressive locations, talks with experts, hands-on workshops, pop-up fashion moments, immersive experiences and more. Melburnians can learn about the circular fashion economy and local manufacturing as well as enjoying dining, bar and coffee culture the way of Melbourne life. Festival also has an array of exclusive wine and dine offers from some of Melbourne's favourite restaurants. The Melbourne Fashion Week runs from the 23rd to the 29th of October. Winter gets to kick off but already you can get a jump start on bluting your entertainment for the cooler months. As the NGV drops its tram pack, 2022's Autumn Winter Art Programs. The National Gallery of Victoria will partnership with the Musée Rosé Paris to organize the blockbuster Melbourne Winter Masterpiece exhibitions. Peter Monda will finally on air his artwork at the NGV. Running in June 2023, the exhibition Pierre Bonner, designed by Inda Madavi, will feature more than 100 works by the French painter Pierre Bonner, one of the most beloved painters of the 20th century, separate for his use of color to convey an sweetest sense of emotions. Bonner Arts is well known for its colorful, textured pictures of French living with the glimpse of metropolitan scenes and natural landscapes. The NGV will showcase the world premiere exhibition Peter Mona, designed by Ina Maravi from Friday 9 June to Sunday 8 October as part of the Melbourne Winter Masterpiece Series. The Melbourne Arts Centre and the Australian Recording Industry Association have partnered up to create one of the most exciting music exhibitions in the world. The Australian Music Vault showcases artefacts and memorabilia from the complete history of Australian music. This free exhibition currently has six showcase sections. The Agents of Change section, The Wild Ones, takes a deep dive into the trailblazers of Australian music, and you can see the amazing work of our First Nation artists in the National Indigenous Music Awards Hall of Fame. The other showcases include The Real Thing, the Melbourne Electric Sound Studio covers how a small, non-for-profit organisation revolutionised the ability and process of producing music, as well as the ability to create your own mixtape as you enjoy the exhibition. And with new experiences, footage and objects on the way, there is always an incentive to come back to the vault. For more information, interviews including Australian music legends such as Paul Kelly and John Farman, go to australianmusicvault.com.au. The much-awaited Melbourne Now 2023 exhibition has opened its door to the public at the Ian Porter Centre. The exhibition features works by local and international artists, performers, designers and entrepreneurs. With more than 200 contemporary projects and events across all three levels of NGV, the exhibition features various disciplines from fashion and jewellery, painting, sculpture and architecture. The highlights of the exhibition including Real Farm's new commissioned timbre, a room-side neon-lit timbre made from thousands of computer fans, drawing on his Vietnamese heritage and interest in gaming culture, James Nielsen, impressive installation Black River of Learning is made from hundreds of protest t-shirts, crocheted 
into a 4-meter circlebird. Slippery Images is one of the most successful subspheres of Melbourne now, which explores that messy zone between familiar and unfamiliarity and challenges photography as a straightforward representation of the world around us. With a number of other standout works, Melbourne Now 2023 is a must-see event for everyone who wants to be immersed in Melbourne's creative energy and explore its diverse culture landscape. With a number of other standout works, Melbourne Now 2023 is a must-see event for everyone who wants to be immersed in Melbourne's creative energy and explore its diverse culture landscape. With its impressive lineup of talented artists and thinkers, the Melbourne Now is open to the public with free admissions. The NGV also offers guided tours and education programs for all ages. For more information, please check out this website. ACME celebrates the women and binary breaking stars of the moving image throughout the 120 plus years of iconic stories, characters and moments in their current exhibition, Goddess, Power, Glamour, Rebellion, curated by Bethan Johnson. Goddess highlights an array of femme presenting actresses including Marilyn Monroe, Dorothy Dandridge, Anna Mae Wong, Michelle Yeoh and more. Looking at all achievements and firsts for actresses and POC actresses in the world immersed with a collection of audio, media, print, fashion and drawings of the stars. Having glamorous costumes and designs of the actresses from signature films and moments such as Mae West's Belle of the 90s gown and Dietrich's tuxedo. Within the exhibition there is an AI, AR and 3D graphic interactive experience called Goddess in the Machine, built by a team of AI and 3D artists as well as software developers. Don yourself a new mask in the future of speculated ideal beauty influenced by technology. As the piece allows you to try different AR filters and adjust them to challenge Hollywood's ideals of traditional beauty. You'll be able to save a three second video of yourself posing with the filter as well. Acme is running multiple events alongside the exhibition in May. Goddess Nights is an after dark version of Goddess with live music and performances from femme focused artists. These include house and disco artist DJ JNet alternative R&B artist CD, hip-hop artist Pookie, and g -Quam and electronic artist Abatonye. In celebration of Goddess, they'll be playing a select program of gender-bending and gender-defying films on Goddess Sundays. This event is held in the Acme Cinemas and will play the 1996 film The Watermelon Woman, directed by Cheryl Dunye, 2019 film Emma, directed by Pablo Lorraine, 1992 film Orlando, directed by Sally Porter, and 2006 film Sakuran, directed by Mika Ninagawa. They will also be running curated, audio described, and Auslan tours for the exhibition. To get more information and tickets, head to the ACME website. Australia's biggest national portrait competition is set to be on display this month. The National Photographic Portrait Prize received over 2,400 applicants from aspiring and professional portrait artists in 2023, with the 47 finalists now having their work displayed at the National Portrait Gallery from the 17th of June to the 2nd of October. The winner of this prestigious competition, which has been running since 2007, will be announced on the launch day of the exhibition and will receive $30,000 from the National Portrait Gallery and $20,000 worth of equipment from Canon Australia. The winner will join an exclusive club of other artists that have won this prestigious award. This includes last year's winner, Wayne Quillman for Silent Strength, Lee Grant's photo of social housing worker, Charlie, that took top honors in 2018, and of course, the inaugural winner in 2007 of Robert Scott Mitchell for the Lindy Lee photo called Birth and Death. The winner will be decided by National Portrait Gallery Senior Advisor, Joanna Gilmore, Director of the Centre for Contemporary Photography, Daniel Bokia smith and critically acclaimed photo media artist, Tamara Dean. They will be tasked with picking the portrait that showcases the themes and characteristics of their chosen person through their artwork. The general public will also be able to vote for their favourite in the People's Choice Award whilst also at the exhibition. For more information, other exhibitions at the National Portrait Gallery and the selected finalists, visit the website. 
at this dynamite exhibition, we may marvel at the world's most complete Triceratops skeleton. Horridus, the Triceratops, has arrived at Melbourne Museum, where visitors can see the massive dinosaur as part of the stunning display. Triceratops, fate of the dinosaurs, takes across two levels of Melbourne Museum in an exhibition that follows the evolution of dinosaurs through the eyes of Horridus, a Triceratops. Horridus, the most intact Triceratops skeleton in the world, will also be on display as part of the exhibition. This massive creature has 266 bones and weighs more than 1,000 kilograms. Triceratops was colossal, over 2 meters tall and up to 8 meters long. That's as tall as a Melbourne tram and over one quarter the length. Horridus, the Triceratops, is a simply spectacular fossil, with the signs behind Triceratops revealed like never before. The first Triceratops fossil was discovered in 1887. Scientists thought the horn must belong to some sort of bison. Today, those mighty horns and distinctive frill make Triceratops one of the most recognizable dinosaurs to have walked the Earth planet. Visitors will also learn about the process of fossilization and paleontology, following the story of the dinosaurs from Horridus time to the present day where dinosaur descendants dwell among us as birds. For more information, visit the website. Take a jump to the left and then a step to the right as the legendary rock and roll musical The Rocky Horror Show has landed back in Melbourne. The horror comedy musical written and created by Richard O'Brien will be celebrating 50 years on stage this year, with the show originally opening in 1973 at the Royal Courts Theatre upstairs. Award winning and nominated actor Jason Donovan will be taking on the role as the lead and playing the eccentric Dr. Frankenfurter in the show until 9th of July. For the remainder of the show, actor David Bedella will be taking over the role and continuing as Dr. Frankenfurter for the rest of the tour. Narrated by Niff Warhurst, follow the newly engaged couple Brad Majors and Janet Weiss, played by Ethan Jones and Deidre Koo, as they head to meet an old professor played by Ellis Dolan. Driving through a thunderstorm, they get a flat tire and are forced to seek for a telephone over at Frankenstein's place. Entering the castle, they are swept up in the antics of the transsexual Transylvanian Dr. Frankenfurter and his perfect creation Rocky, played by Loretta Malcolm who is helped and served by their servants Magenta and Riff Raff, played by Stella Perry and Henry Rollo. Watch in anticipation as the night unfolds, divulging in debauchery, making the newly engaged couple question everything about themselves. The Rocky Horror Show will be playing at the Athenaeum Theatre and will be finishing on the 23rd of July. To get more information and tickets, head to the Rocky Horror Show website. The sold out 2022 Melbourne Winter Event Lightscape is back and reconceived for 2023. Partnered and powered by Red Energy and presented by Sony Music and the Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria. After massive success in the United Kingdom and the United States, you can immerse yourself in groups of up to 20 in the lights, colors and reflections of the mesmerizing after dark displays. See exhibitions of LEDs, colorful installations, soundscapes and sculptures on this outdoor public walk event, including a new two kilometer trail around the lake where you can see a variety of artworks that burst in over 100,000 lights, such as the Winter Cathedral or an eight meter sphere filled with 20,000 moving LEDs. While the singing trees may lure you away, make sure to check out the Lightscape Welcome Zone, where you can get some food and drink from Melbourne's food trucks and pop-up bars. Food and beverages will also be available at the observatory gate entry along the trail and the terrace. You should give yourself around 90 minutes to have the whole experience. No pets beyond service animals, and Lightscape will continue in rain or wind events, unless considered hazardous, so check the weather forecast. There are also relaxed sessions for those who may be more suited to experience the event in a more relaxing and calming environment. For more details, visit the website. Symbols may not be at the front of our thoughts that often, but they have been a definitive source of communication since early mankind. Often, the association with a symbol was all early man needed. A sign representing an idea or an object was all it took to communicate. So it makes sense that symbols became a part of our universal language. 
Given the ancients' respect and values placed on the planets, it is not surprising that symbols were created to represent what were considered the heavenly bodies within the universe. From the confidence of Jupiter to the beauty of Venus, each planet has been given its own symbolic meaning. The fact that the ancients introduced astrology symbols as part of our universal language so many years ago makes perfect sense. The amount of respect given to the stars since man first arrived has never been and will never be a Astrology symbols represent a variety of characteristics and influences from each of the signs. From the confidence of the Aries ram to the balance of Libra's scales, each sign has its own symbol for a purpose. The symbol for Aries is the ram. The ram as a symbol represents the horns of a ram. It signifies a head-on approach to life, and the ram reflects leadership, confidence, drive, and courage. The symbol for Taurus is the bull. The bull as a symbol represents the head and the horns of a bull. It signifies a sturdy approach to life. The bull reflects strength, power, stamina, and resolution. The symbol for Gemini is the twins. The twins as a symbol shows two lines joined together. The twins reflect intellect, creativity, interaction, adaptability, and liberty. The symbol for Cancer is the crab. The crab as a symbol represents self-preservation. The crab reflects complexity, sensitivity, support, durability, and emotion. The symbol for Leo is the lion. The lion as a symbol represents the mane of the lion. The lion reflects leadership, nobility, strength, courage, and pride. The symbol for Virgo is the virgin. The virgin as a symbol represents the sexual organs with an inward tail closing off entry. The virgin reflects practicality, perfectionism, truth, dignity, and composure. The symbol for Libra is the scales. The scales as a symbol represents a setting sun balanced between night and day. And the scales reflect harmony, partnerships, fairness, popularity, and beauty. The symbol for Scorpio is the scorpion. The scorpion as a symbol represents the male sexual organs with an upturned tail striving for a higher calling to action. And the scorpion reflects intensity, inspiration, assertiveness, and purpose. The symbol for Sagittarius is the archer. The arrow as a symbol represents the drawn arrow of the archer. The arrow reflects bravery, direction, focus, poise and thought. The symbol for Capricorn is the goat. The goat as a symbol represents the beard of the goat, as in the V, and the tail of a fish. The goat reflects leadership, practicality, patience, truth and pride. The symbol for Aquarius is the water bearer, and the water bearer reflects freshness, equality, vision, freedom and individuality. The symbol for Pisces is the two fish, and the fish reflect unity, mysticism, understanding, honesty, and emotion. Some symbols are so ancient, it's not quite fully understood just how they evolved. But what we can be certain of, however, is that they have been a definitive source of communication for thousands of years. Welcome to the show, Diego. Hello. You join us from, well, all the way from Mexico. You were born in Guadalajara. You're now in Melbourne. And your work kind of revolves a bit around monsters and um, a bit of the supernatural semantics. Can you speak more about what yes. that means? <laughs> so I am post-Catholic, which means that I don't believe in anything, but I'm heavily engaged with um, the Judeo-Christian imagination. Um, so at least as far as my work goes, uh, I tend to gravitate towards things that um, help us reflect on how we use images to divide ourselves from others, so people from other places, different beliefs. So I um, have a strong uh, commitment to those kind of images. Right, and I remember uh, reading something about this this video that was then translated and uh, with Santa Claus, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, there's this movie called Santa Claus versus the Devil, and so a big part of the wardrobe was based on the figure of the devil in that movie. And so while I was rewatching it, because I used to showcase it quite often when I was a kid, um, I realized that they dubbed Santa with 
an English accent, but they left the Mexican accent of the devil. Mm. So that really speaks to kind of how we often use the Gothic imagination to push um, some people outside of what we consider to be our homes. Interesting. Yeah. And you're, you do a lot of different things. You manage a gallery, you're a writer, you are showcased in the Mars Gallery. Um, what are you currently working on that you're most excited about? Well, so I am doing some writing. I just finished a piece on um, the role of sound in operations of the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I wrote some catalog essays. One of them is for an artist in Sydney called Nadia Hernandez, who is from Venezuela. So in one of your past exhibitions at the Mars Gallery, you worked with light. Can you tell us about this installation? Yes, yeah, so it was a show about vampires. Um, one of the centerpieces was a coffin made to my measurements, which was actually a light box with an inverted cross on top. And so the idea is that with the vampire, um, even though they're really, really ancient and nomadic, their tomb always ties them to a place. <laughs> and there was also other kind of light pieces referencing movies. But um, yeah, I think the, um, yeah, the coffin is like the most memorable. The work that's shown behind us, that's part of the April Fool's exhibition, there are photographs of you, but you've done a lot of research behind it. Um, and that's a strong part of your work, correct? Yeah, yeah. So for example, with that photo, something I couldn't understand is why, <laughs> why is the devil wearing puffy shorts? <laughs> sure. You know, it's like... <laughs> But um, yeah, it goes back to the medieval jester in the court. And there's this really complex idea of how having a trickster figure that creates kind of like mayhem actually helps to maintain order. And ah. that's, yeah, and that's what the devil, that's the role that the devil plays. So you need someone messing things up to keep everything aligned. Someone was just yeah. telling that to me yesterday. Well, They're like, true. somebody's yeah. got to play this role. Exactly, so. yeah. Um, art collectors have a very important role to play that they often don't fulfill because it is their responsibility to help shape careers of younger artists. Mm. And they have to do that by exercising their own taste and preferences for themes, contents, and style. But they need to be more proactive um, in doing that. And it's actually quite exciting because they also become leaders in their field by supporting younger artists. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. And for someone that would like to get involved? Well, they should go to artists run spaces because they're exactly the, same uh, the s exactly the same artists that end up showing in galleries and museums. And that's when they are more accessible, when the money means the most to them, and when they're actually creating a huge difference in their career. One yeah, so go to artist run spaces. Artist <laughs> run yeah. spaces, okay. Yeah. And one of them um, is the Mars Gallery. Is there another one that you can note? Well, Mars is a commercial space. Okay. So that's a commercial gallery. I manage Seventh Gallery, but there's also Blindside, King Sari, um, TCB. So there's, there's a lot of them they can go to. And a really good trick is if you go to a gallery and ask them where to go next, they, they will tell you. Oh, so you could go on your own art tour by just starting at one gallery and asking for recommendations. Yeah, it's like, um, it's, no, it's no balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So people can find you at the Mars Gallery and on your socials. Uh, yes, at Diego is Monster. Great. Yeah. That's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.